Hi there, this is Phil Pendlebury. I'm here with Cubase 10.5. I'm just going to do a quick run-through today on my newly acquired Easy Bass from ToonTrack. I'm a big fan of ToonTrack stuff. I've been using Superior Drummer since its first ever incarnation, and I'm now using Superior Drummer 3 R for just about everything. And um, I've got quite a few different... VST plugins and so on for bass, and I do actually play bass as well. In fact, guitar and bass are my main instrument to play. But I currently don't have a bass guitar, so I'm always on the lookout for something uh, to add a little bit of realism uh, to my music. So when ToonTrack brought out Easy Bass, um, it was a no-brainer for me to, to pick it up. So here it is. Um, I'm not going to go through all the details here because otherwise this video would be far too long and not only that is there are some very good videos you'll find in various places obviously YouTube and so on. So currently there's two models we've got the vintage model you can see here which has been customized by me and the modern model. Um, again you can find out more details about those in various other places I believe the modern one is based around an alembic uh, bass and the vintage is I think it's a music man or a jazz. I'm not sure to be honest I should have checked on that Hopefully we'll see more models coming in the future. I'm looking forward to things like a Rickenbacker and uh, Obviously precision, you know, that'll be great Anyway, so the purpose of this little video was just quickly to show how the audio recognition side works or the audio tracker It's a little bit tricky um, here, uh, what I did was I set up a, a project with a few different bits of my guitar playing and I found it a little difficult to be honest because what happens is that um, the bar numbers and so on it, it, it gets a little bit confusing. Anyway, I, I will begin that now and we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. So what I've done is played a few little different styles of, of guitar and then um, hoping to kind of match or you know, see what the audio tracker can actually do. So I'll mute that because that's some work I've done earlier on. So here's the first little clip. So not particularly well played, but just to try out and see what kind of nuances um, the audio tracker picks up. So there's a few ways of, of doing this. You can drag audio onto, onto the plugin or uh, in this case what I'm doing is I'm going to actually send it from Cubase. So if I do new session here just to make sure there's nothing from any of the uh, previous bits I've been doing, we're pretty much ready to go. The only thing is that you have to have this uh, audio sender plugin installed, which I'll show you now. Uh, let's just get that out of the way for a second. So there it is, it's this the tune track audio sender, it's a little plug-in, and I've got that on the guitar track. So that's the guitar track there, and then the sender is an insert, and that's the last thing you need to see it of that. So we go back to the um, Easy Bass application, and what I found is, although I've got these on a, on a loop here, uh, what I found is take the loop off in Cubase, just run it back a little bit. And obviously this would be different if you were tracking maybe an entire song. But for me it's just little clips. So what I found is take the loop off um, and just play from a bit before and leave it running a bit after and you'll see why in a second. So let's, let's do this. So we're going to say record audio. It's going to tell us to press play in Cubase. So I'm going to do that right now, as you can see. Okay. So we've done that. It's now asking us how we'd like to deal with that. Well, that was obviously guitar audio, and I want bass MIDI. Um, if we'd have played bass, then, you know, we could have done bass audio to, to bass MIDI. Um, the tempo is now automatically set. Um, this has just happened in the update, which happened about an hour ago, uh, the 1.03 update. So that's fine, let's just do that. And then now, as you see, 
everything's there's nothing there on the screen and this is one of my little bugbears so we have to roll along and as you can see it starts on bar five my bar is zero here and that's because i've got a six bar offset on my cubase project which um easybase doesn't take into account anyhow not a problem looks lined up quite nicely so what i'm going to do is play it see what happens just set the cursor to the right position and off we go. And we can put the loop back on now. Just keep. So you can see here you've got a little fader that allows you to choose between the original audio or the MIDI. And we want all the MIDI. The audio, you can still hear it from Cubase itself. Um, so let's have a listen again. And without the original guitar audio, here we go. So as you can see, it's not picked that up perfectly but then again it wasn't played perfectly was it um and there's a lot you can do with this now to tight it tighten it up sort it out make it sound how you want it to sound the little bits there that would probably be palm mutes you can change the articulations while we're still in the audio editor so yeah you can change the articulations here but i what i found the best the best way to deal with this is okay so you've read in the basic audio it's not going to be lined up with my project that's okay. Um, and then we'll, what we do is we just add it onto the song, which is down here. All the notes and everything are completely wrong. Well, that doesn't matter again. And as because it started up at bar five, what I'm going to have to do now is move everything back, move it all over here. Not bothered about those, to be honest, but we'll move them anyway. And now we can work specifically with the grid editor, which makes things a little bit easier to deal with. Let's just move velocity out of the way. So there you can see the, the notes. Now I'm not going to go into massively editing this now. I'll show you the finished result. But basically, you can choose all the different articulations here. So that particular note there, for example, yeah, okay, so it's missed off my first note there. Maybe I cut that off by accident. It's quite clever because some of these little muty bits, I haven't touched any of this yet, you know, and it's and it's kind of done a decent job. If I want to just draw in another note there just to make that correct, and we'll make that a, an actual normal note. Oops. There we go. Let's play that. We'll quantize a bit now and just have a little play about while that's playing and you'll see how things work. Okay, so um, what I'm trying to do here is play, um, use the Cubase transport to control this, and it's getting really confusing because, like I said, I'm on bar zero here in Cubase, and bar zero here doesn't match. So when I'm uh, selecting Cubase to play bar zero, I'm getting nothing. So what I have to do is move everything over here to bar five, and now we should be able to do use Cubase's transport. <laughs> So that's uh, with everything fully quantized. If we want to, you know, mess around with the articulations, we can do that now. There's lots of different ways. You can't actually use a slap um, with the vintage 
uh, bass. The slap articulation only applies to the modern bass, which we'll get to in a second. So after a bit of messing around, what I ended up with, I will then save into the groove editor, and here it is. Now oh, that's one version, and there's the other version. So if I get rid of this now and just drag in my kind of finished version and show you how, uh, how that looks in the grid editor, there it is. And you can see I've just messed around a little bit with the articulations and quantized things a little bit and so on. We can still edit that further if required. We can uh, dampen it a little bit more. Have a listen to this. Um, so it's pretty impressive, to be honest. I mean, it, you know, my my little demo here is probably not doing this justice because the way I'm working, I don't think it's ideal. I think with um, with the audio side, maybe better to actually just drag the audio in to the standalone instrument and not try and do it within your project. I don't know. I'm I'm really and to be honest, it's not really something I will use a lot because I will program. I'll play, you know, I'll play I'll play the bass on the on the keyboard for now. Um, but you know, as you can see, there's quite a lot that you can do there. The one thing I picked up on earlier on as well was the ability to do little slides and things. So I've done an example of that. So I just want to show you how that works. So here's here's a slide example. So again if we go to the grid editor you can see here it's quite easy to just draw in a note, you select the notes and you tell it to do a legato slide. And that's handy for like at the end of songs and beginning of songs and so on, where the bass actually enters. Uh, you know that might sound a little bit long but you can edit that to go with um, the song. Um, on top of that, of course, anything that you do can be saved as your own groove. So I've got quite a few here that I've done earlier. Here's a rocky one. Now, again, something like something like a rock groove. Get the idea with that when that's played fast it's it's actually quite difficult to get that sounding realistic but with um easy bass you can do a decent job there's lots of flexibility for editing which i really like so let's have another quick listen to that And actually that part was meant for a um, fingered bass, so here's the fingered version. So yeah, so let's have a, uh, we've got another one that I did earlier on that we should probably just have a quick look at. So that was then read in, and again I played around with it a little bit, and um, we came up with that. You know the name of the song, so there's no hiding that one. And there's uh, there's what I kind of ended up with. So that's about it really. The only other thing I uh, just wanted to point out, um, there is a setting here, 
and multi outs, use multi outs, which uh, highly recommend using. Um, this hasn't been mentioned in any of the tutorials that I've seen so far, so just quickly show you that. So here's, uh, let's just run that. Uh, I'm going to turn the sub up full. I'm going to turn the amp up and let's just run that part and have a play and you'll see what I mean. As you can see, that's the DI, the amp, which is always the first output, and the sub. So you can actually mix within your mixer as well as within the plugin itself. So if you've got any particular plugins that you'd like to apply, um, I, I do have a few specific things that I normally do with bass. Um, it's great to be able to mix those and then you mix them up into a group so that they're all together again and you can then control them um, in whatever way you wish. Um, yeah, so that's about it, I think. Oh yeah, okay, so the only other thing I just wanted to uh, go to was, okay, so let's take that thing there as an example. Um, so there's there's the, you know, the finished thing, which you've seen. I've changed the key thing so that it fits with the actual notes that are being played. Again, there's other tutorials that go into that in proper detail. And then what I've done is I've done what you would do with the drums. I've dragged that over. So now, without playing anything from here at all, so I'm going to disable that and make sure that follow host is off. When I play Cubase now, we won't get anything playing from here, apart from the actual bass. So it's converted that into kind of what we would look at as a, as a standard MIDI part. Let's just get rid of my rubbish guitar again and have a look at it. So you can see, obviously all the notes are there. And then what you've got here is what look to me to be like key switches that control the articulation. So for example, if I just mute all of these little key switches here, if I mute them off. Which is neat because when I first saw this I thought these must be the articulations but obviously they're not because they're too short, they don't really coincide. So they must be key switches. So I'm presuming that you know you could, um, you could assign these key switches to uh, a controller if you wanted to play the instrument live. You know again that's something I've not gone into but uh, I'm sure it'd be possible. So yeah, so if we run that You can see that it would be quite easy to edit. I, I really do think that's uh, all I can do with this at the moment. Like I said, there is some really nice tutorials around if you want to have a, a closer look. Mine was just more of a, a little delve into some of the odd bits that haven't been mentioned. And um, if you're interested in uh, knowing how I did this little bit of customization, uh, feel free to drop me a comment as well. Um, you might hate it. I don't know. This. All right, that's it for now, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening.